According to the CDC, heart disease is the leading cause of death in the United States. High cholesterol increases a person's risk for heart disease, but new guidelines for treating high cholesterol are being pushed by experts. Guidelines are meant to help health care providers prevent, diagnose, and treat high cholesterol. Joining me now is Jordan Ray, a cardiologist with the Mayo Clinic. Hey, good to have you here. Nice Doctors here. Are, are calling this now a lifespan approach, and they're calling it that because they're saying, look, when there's a family history, you've got to take cholesterol issues into account with children as young as two. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's very well known that cholesterol exposure is a long-term uh, effect. So the more exposure you have, the longer effect you have or the exposure you've got, the more likely you are to develop the bad things that have come from cholesterol, including heart attacks and strokes. So w when you involve a two-year-old, you're talking about things, incorporating things in their diet, exercise, things like that. I th yeah, those are very important factors in reducing heart attacks and stroke. I think the thing that's very important particularly is noting family history. So there are certain aspects of uh, genetically inherited conditions that I think we need to focus on being more likely to catch earlier. So in, in families who have a notorious history of very high cholesterol that's very resistant to treatment, or a family history where everybody in the family has had a heart attack or stroke, somebody as, age, as young as two, we should be focusing on, do they have some of these inherited forms of cholesterol disorders? Because screening them earlier and treating them earlier reduces that overall long-term exposure risk that they're gonna have. And, and I was reading the report and they were suggesting for people over 40, who have a family history, part of the discussion with your doctor might be taking statins. That's true. Uh, statins are, I think, the foundation and the mainstay of cholesterol lowering. Um, I think the new guidelines really, really focus on a, a tailored approach for every patient. Formerly, it was one of those situations where you'd come in, you'd see their doctor, the doctor would say, hey, here are your numbers, take this medicine, go home. I think we need to stop focusing on that, and I think we need to look at who are you as a person? What are your personal risk factors, including your cholesterol, and how can we lower it? And no question, for most patients over the age of 40, you're going to have some of those risk factors. A little blood pressure-related issue, a family history of heart disease, tobacco exposure, smoking is the worst thing you can do for cholesterol-related issues. Um, those kind of things are going to add up, and I think the addition of a statin is foundation. It's key. It's the most important medication. And from all the reading I did, doctors say, look, these, these guidelines are much improved over the ones that came out, I think it was five years ago. And the bottom line is that now moms and dads, as well as patients and doctors, have to have informed discussions. Very much so. I think that's, that's my personal way of practicing when I see patients. I think it's my job as a physician is to educate. It's not enough to just beat you over the head and say, you do this. It's, I want to teach you about what this process is. It's very tough to conceptualize what is cholesterol-related disease. You can't feel it, you can't see it, and so I go through a detailed process with my patients and talk about what are their risks, how are they going to, what are they going to be if they don't achieve these goals, where are they going to be if they do achieve these goals. That kind of tailored, educated approach, I think, is very important for not only the relationship between patients and doctors, but I think for adherence and medications. So. Uh, those kind of processes are very important in the in the doctor-patient relationship, for sure. And, and for guys, it means going to the doctor. Just if you go to the don't go to the doctor, doesn't mean that you're not going to have a problem. And ignoring it doesn't mean it's going to go away. That's, <laughs> you, that's right, that's guys. It's 100 percent yeah. true. Yes, me included. If you missed any of this information, don't worry. We'll put this interview on newsforjacks.com. Just un look under the uh, live healthy section. All right.